I'm Kevin Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from the Vatican. According to Cardinal Sean O'Malley of Boston, clerical abuse is not just a problem reserved to a few nations. It's a human problem that the church needs to face everywhere in the world. The Cardinal made his remarks at a press conference following a three-day meeting with the new Papal Commission for Protecting Minors from Clerical Sex Abuse. The Cardinal, who is one of the eight members of the commission, said that they will recommend stricter standards for accountability, saying that their concern is to make sure that there are clear and effective protocols to deal with situations where superiors of the church have not fulfilled their obligations to protect children. The Cardinal said they are working towards accountability for everyone in the church, regardless of what their status is. The commission also announced its plans to nominate additional members for appointment by the Pope. Cardinal Sean said the commission planned to draft statutes for approval by Pope Francis to clarify the body's nature, structure, activity, and goals. In news now from Rome, this weekend Pope Francis celebrated a mass of thanksgiving for the new St. John Paul II at Rome's Polish parish. Rome Reports has more. John Paul II's canonization was celebrated by thousands in St. Peter's Square. But to make things a bit more intimate, Pope Francis celebrated a Thanksgiving Mass in Rome's so-called Polish parish, the St. Stanislaw Church. As a native of Poland, St. John Paul II visited this very parish more than 80 times to pray and to reflect. Nei momenti di tristezza e di abbattimento, quando tutto sembrava perduto, egli non perdeva la speranza, perché la sua fede e la sua speranza erano fisse in Dio. The Pope recognized that as a country, Poland has been tried many times in history. The country understood, he said, that before glory comes the passion of the cross. It's something St. John Paul II understood, he said. The question is whether others are willing to follow. And quoting St. John Paul II, the Pope explained that the church is made up of pilgrims, not vagabonds. Siamo viandanti, ma no erranti. Eh, in cammino, ma sappiamo dove, and dove andiamo. Eh? Gli erranti non sanno. During his short visit to the local parish, Pope Francis also met privately with homeless people who received support from that church. The Polish parish is one of the few in Rome that houses a relic of St. John Paul II, along with one of his white papal vestments. Looking at news from around the world, Archbishop Silvano Tomasi, the Holy See representative to the UN agencies in Geneva, led the Vatican delegation at the May 5th through the 6th hearing of the Committee Against Torture, which monitors the implementation of the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, or Degrading Treatment. During the meeting, the Archbishop was repeatedly asked about the clerical sexual abuse in the Church. He told the panel that the measures undertaken in the last 10 years on the part of both the Holy See and local churches are bringing about a positive result with the decline in cases of abuse of minors. Archbishop Tomasi told members that the Holy See, which signed the treaty, has no direct legal and juridical jurisdiction outside Vatican City State. Felice Gare, vice chair of the UN committee, said she was concerned that while the Holy See voluntarily signed the treaty, it now claims it applies only to the four corners of Vatican City State. The committee asked for statistics on the allegations before it shifted its focus to the Catholic Church's opposition, opposition to abortion, including when the child is conceived during a rape. And Gair said that the committee has found that laws that criminalize the termination of pregnancy in all circumstances can violate the terms of the convention. We go back to the Vatican now. Pope Francis at his Mass on Monday at the Doma Santa Marta explained the dangers of vanity and greed for Christians working in the church. Rome Reports has more from the Pope's residence. During his Monday morning Mass, Pope Francis talked about following God. He explained that Christians should always stay away from vanity, power and greed. That way, he said, they won't take advantage of their relationship with God. Facciamo cose cercando di farci vedere un po', cercando la vanità. È pericolosa la vanità perché ci fa scivolare subito sull'orgoglio e la superbia e poi tutto è finito lì. Eh? E mi faccio la domanda, io come seguo Gesù? 
le cose buone che io faccio, le faccio di nascosto o mi piace farmi vedere. The Pope also talked about careerism, meaning those who use the church to improve their standing in their career. He prayed so that all Christians may follow their good intentions. In news now from around the country, the botched execution of an Oklahoma inmate has once again called into question capital punishment. The planned execution of convicted killer Clayton Lockett using a new three-drug lethal injection protocol failed, leaving Lockett showing signs of pain and causing prison officials to halt the procedure. Lockett later died of a heart attack. In a statement, Archbishop Paul Coakley of Oklahoma City said Lockett's death highlights the brutality of the death penalty and should bring the nation to consider adopting a moratorium on the death penalty or even abolish it altogether. Governor Mary Fallon ordered a 14-day stay of execution for Charles Warner, an inmate scheduled to be executed two hours after Lockett. She also ordered the state's Department of Corrections to conduct a full review of their execution procedures to determine what happened and why. In his statement, the archbishop went on to say that while we need to administer justice, we must find a way of doing so that does not contribute to the culture of death. And finally in the news, a popular New York pilgrimage site has launched a $1 million, fund, a $1 million fundraising campaign to stay open. The National Shrine of Our Lady of Martyrs in Orysville since the late 19th century has commemorated the site of the 17th century Mohawk village called Osernenon. Their Jesuit missionaries, Saints Isaac Jogues, René Goupil, and John Lalande, were martyred in the 1640s, and Saint Kateri Tekawitha was born in 1656. However, the Shrine's 2013 season attendance dropped by more than 50 percent and collections brought in less than $100,000. That was despite the 20,000 pilgrims that visited the weekend in 2012 that St. Kateri was canonized. Because the Martyr Shrine is not supported by the Albany Diocese, it relies on the collections from its masses and periodic novenas to support it. The 400-acre site includes five chapels, two museums, outdoor stations of the cross, and a 10,000-capacity Colosseum church. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week with Catholic News Break right here on the Catholic TV Network.